Um, so I'll be uh, presenting on um, how ultrasound can be used to both diagnose and help treat um, patients with Crohn's disease. Um, so just a brief overview of what Crohn's disease is. Um, it's an autoimmune inflammatory bowel disease. Um, you can have symptoms including a loss of appetite, diarrhea, nausea, fever, um, and you can have like really, these really painful um, like sessions of cramps and like just pain in that um, general area of your abdomen. Um, I chose to study Crohn's disease because I have uh, family members who've been diagnosed with uh, Crohn's before. And so I thought it'd be really interesting to find out more about it. Um, and this can be hereditary. And um, what I didn't know before researching this is it's not curable, but um, what can help is like changing your dietary um, intake, such as like not going with foods super high in like uh, fibers um, you can, or grainy foods, um, not intaking dairy or caffeine, um, all those things can help or can contribute to um, causing a Crohn's attack to occur. Um, so why would um, people, why should people use ultrasound when diagnosing or checking for Crohn's? Um, in most cases, the colonoscopy is used to diagnose patients um, that come in with symptoms for Crohn's disease. Um, as well as taking a blood test to check the levels of C-reactive protein, which is um, high levels of C-reactive protein uh, generally lead to um, uh, diagnosis for Crohn's disease as well. However, um, once a patient's been diagnosed with Crohn's disease, you don't want to really use a colonoscopy to um, check the patient for Crohn's every, or how the Crohn's is affecting the patient every time they come in for a checkup. And so what's recently been... Um, been used is the technique of ultrasound to check how the Crohn's is affecting the intestinal lining or the intestinal wall um, and how it's, um, and like, it's very good at like um, supervising your patients and like um, checking for structures that outside of the intestinal wall, which I'll get into in another slide um, that may be affected by Crohn's as well. And kind of what, um, what William was saying as well, ultrasound is cheap and very easily repeatable, whereas a colonoscopy is not so much. And so techniques that are used for um, diagnosing patients with Crohn's disease is use the curvilinear and the linear probe. Um, usually the linear, uh, linear probe is used after the curvilinear. Um, use the curvilinear first to check for these like large findings. And once you find these um, findings such as um, fat or um, a thickened intestinal wall, you would use a linear probe to go and get a more detailed view on it. Um, these procedures or these, uh, when you're using your ultrasound, you wanna do it post six hours post preandial pre or um, pre-preandial, which is basically just um, six hours after you eat or just before you eat in general for that day. Um, and it's because you have low levels of like movement in your intestinal wall area, as well as um, less air in the area, which gives you better visibility. Um, some structures are difficult to view, however, which is one of the drawbacks of ultrasound. Um, some of these areas include the rectal and anal regions because of the where the pelvis is. You can't really get a good view of this ultrasound for those. Um, as well as the ascendant and descendant colon may be difficult to view as well, depending on the person's anatomy as well as the habitus. Um, so some of the things you would want to look for in patients that potentially may have Crohn's is a thickening or disorganization of the intestinal wall. The intestinal wall has several layers to it, and sometimes the inflammation from that um, can cause like those layers to not be as easily like distinguishable from each other. Um, the thickening, usually the wall, the intestinal wall itself is about three millimeters, with some areas varying below or slightly over, but around three millimeters is the amount. And um, in some patients, it can from Crohn's disease, you can go from three millimeters all the way up to like fifteen. So it's pretty um, apparent when you go on ultrasound to see when the intestinal wall is um, thickened. Uh, you also wanna check for stiffness. Um, so you can even like use the little probe for compressibility. Um, those with Crohn's disease, it's not gonna have nearly as a compressible um, intestine. Uh, you also can check for increased vasculature due to angiogenesis, which I thought was really cool. Using the Doppler or the color Doppler, you can see how much more um, blood flow is being drawn to that area um, versus a normal part of the intestine that's not affected. 
Um, as well as assessment of these adjacent structures, as I mentioned before, you have these mesenteric fatty tissue that will surround it during to surround the intestine during um, during um, Crohn's episodes, uh, and they also which actually like retract or like go away when the symptoms are gone for it, um, and that's these show up as like these hyperechoic areas around um, the intestine. And so here's an example of the thickening of the of the intestinal wall um, using ultrasound. As you can see on the left here, you have um, one that's just about three millimeters or is on the other side, you have 13 millimeters. Um, here's an example of the mesenteric fatty tissue up on the outside. Um, as you can see, it's hyper hyperechoic areas around your intestinal wall. Um, pretty easily distinguished or seen on the ultrasound machine, which you can't see using a colonoscopy. And here's an example of a fistula. Um, some other, it's one of the other um, signs that can come from someone who has um, Crohn's disease. Uh, fistulas, abscesses, and uh, intestinal stenosis it can all be viewed via um, an ultrasound uh, machine, um, which can help in your diagnosis for the patient. And so, uh, yeah, as I just said there, and then a recent study with, oh, sorry. Uh, in a recent study, it showed that um, using ultrasound to diagnose these patients has a very high selectivity and specificity for diagnosing. Um, however, um, even with all these findings um, in my research, I found that everything with this is within the past like three years of using ultrasound to diagnose Crohn's and not even just Crohn's for the anything GI in general. It seems very like new and very like not as many people are like, or it seems like a very new field that people are going into. And so in the three articles that I read, um, at the end of each one of them, they all gave a little quote at the end saying like, it's not like the ideal yet because there's no textbook way of like diagnosing patients with ultrasounds yet. And like, there are references that you can use such, for example, there's um, something called the Harvey, Harvey Bradshaw index, um, which you can use to like, um, uh, compare your measurement of the intestinal wall to other patients that have been diagnosed with Crohn's disease because there's no like gold standard for if your intestinal wall is sticking to this amount, then you probably have Crohn's. Um, and so there's just still so much um, research that can be done um, in this area to like help diagnose patients, but um, yeah. And here are my references and that's it. Thank you.